not going to lie the West Virginia mountains are pretty cold right now it's about 36 degrees outside fairly chilly but anyway what's up you guys Chet Guthrie the dream poet here coming to you all from New River Gorge National Park and Preserve here in West Virginia if you all are curious, the New River Gorge National Park and Preserve is one of the newer parks here in the National Park Service. But anyway, guys, there is a lot of awesome history here. If you all remember, sometime back in late September, I did a video on the ghost town of Thurman, West Virginia. Now, if you're curious, Thurman, West Virginia it is a go-to ghost town like if you're interested in ghost towns if you're interested in anything on the topic that is one of the main ones you want to see but here in the new river gorge area there is another ghost town which i think is very underrated it's got a lot of cool history behind it it's just as awesome and really for the time that coal was a major operation here in the West Virginia area this was one of the primary producers but anyway you guys I'll tell you a little bit about the history of Nuttleburg now if you want to read the historical marker you can but I will explain a bit of a summarization of what Nuttleburg's history was you see, in 1870, John Nuttall visits the area when he finds out that the CNO Railroad, or better known as the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad, is making its way through this area looking for coal. He looks to buy land, and he does. When he buys this land, he and his family, they homestead, and well, that's when they begin a coal operation. You see, in about 1873, that is when the Chesapeake and Ohio makes its way through this area. They get their rails going, which actually just over here is the railroad tracks, the same railroad tracks that have been around for over a hundred years and really what established this town. Now for the next hundred years or so, this town will thrive. In fact, at one point, the uh, very well-known entrepreneur, car tycoon, automobile tycoon, Henry Ford, he will own and he will lease out Nettleburg to different companies that want to use the coal here. He's really using the coal to uh, power his foundries to work on his cars. And around this time, this is when Nettleburg kind of sees a bit of a decline. It starts going downhill. And then, well, of course, you know, there's the bust of coal that slows, slows things down until, well, about 1955, the post office here in Nettleburg shuts down. And the town will continue to face more shortages, more, uh, more loss of profit, until finally in the early 2000s the Nuttall family they give this land what was once Nuttleburg a very powerful coal town to the National Park Service in present day there are still foundations here and there is what a um, there is a very well preserved building which is the uh, coal triple which is right down over there which we're about to check out here in a minute and also at the very top of the hill you also have the actual mine itself so anyway i want to get my blood pumping i want to talk about the history of nodelberg and i want to see some of these uh these old buildings and these foundations so let's do it now this foundation right over here which is kind of hidden this is where the town's boarding house was and as it says on this historical marker this was probably the most imposing building here in Nettleburg. Um, it was a really well, it was a really nice home. Actually, here is an actual photo of it. And historians, and historians believe that the house was originally built as the family home of Jackson Taylor, the son-in-law son of John Nuttall. Taylor also married John Elizabeth Nuttall's daughter, Martha, and he served as the company book, bookkeeper. 
but anyway just over here is the actual foundation itself and as you all can see compared to the photos really the only thing here is a pretty large foundation like this kind of looks to be where the stairs used to be or maybe the basement I'd probably say the basement because you can kind of see where things used to lead however they don't anymore and it looks like this is the actual foundation to the house going inside I'm not sure where the entrance would have been well we'll just say this is the present day entrance yeah the present day entrance it's cool to see how the National Park Service has really kept this foundation up and I find it really cool that some of these ghost towns in these national parks it's really cool to see how some of them have been very well preserved and kept up while others have more or less gone to the wayside a good example of this is in Elkmont oh and this is cool look at this now this is a cool piece of old school foundationary work foundationary work so we'll go inside oh my goodness oh this is cool look at all the rock i'm guessing right here is where the uh where the old stove used to be you know where that would heat things up keep the building heated make sure everything was okay or at least that's that's what I'm thinking anyway it's kind of cool to see that it it comes in three levels and here you still have some of the old stairs I mean obviously they're kind of falling apart but you can you can tell that at one time they were stairs they went to somewhere probably the first floor of the house or maybe second or maybe the main floor a lot of this has a uh, a uh, a rock city kind of vibe but just think this used to be a, uh, a boarding house now obviously it's it's nothing more than uh, for the most part just a rock pile we got some more stairs right here <sighs> probably going to what would have been the uh, guessing probably the living room or the, the living room or one of the bedrooms but I like the fact that they built it right into the side of a of a hill that is good showmanship there uh. huh look how it all seems to be built i know i've already said it but i really like the fact i really like the fact fact that it's all built into the side of the hill It was all done with rock. Heavy boulders. A lot of ingenuity for the time. And the sight of the New River never ceases to amaze me. And this is cool. I saw this on the way to um, on the way to the parking lot. But since we were looking at stairs that were practically falling apart here are the stairs that probably look well no not probably they do look like you know what if you didn't know anything else was here but you did see these stairs you would know that there was a house here at one time and cool like right beneath here here's the old school brick and uh 
it's just awesome. Oh yeah, and look, there goes a train. This reminds me a lot of uh, what I saw in Thurmond with their post office. Even though I know, yes, I know that was a, a boarding house and a home. Um, but I'm just saying, like at the uh, at the post office in Thurman, just the brick that reminds me so much of this type of build. Now, as I was saying, Nuttleburg was a coal town, and the best preserved building is the is the uh, is the triple here. I think it's triplet triple. Anyway, it's a big red building that is very iconic to this area. And also in this area too, they also had their own Coke ovens. And on this channel, you all have seen me go to some Coke ovens in the Chattanooga, North Georgia area. Well, Nuttleburg had its own. That just goes to show like how industrialized this operation was for its time. But this is what I was trying to say to the triple or the tipple. Oh, never mind. There is not an R there. A tipple. Two tipple. I got that wrong. My apologies on that. And like a giant skyscraper in the distance, it makes itself known. This is the coal tipple. And I will say, this thing is way, way bigger in person. Now you all must be wondering, how far does this cold tipple go? Well, it is a mile and a half long. And as I was saying in the parking lot, at the very top of the tipple is the coal mine and the head house. That's kind of like where the very top of the mining area was, where the mine would shoot down the coal from this, uh, this line right here. It would fill up into this house and it would be dropped into the, uh, the locomotive cars below. In fact, here in one of the historical markers, this tells about how the tipple actually worked. The conveyor, it would carry coal down from the mine to the tipple. Marcus picking the marble screen for cleaning and sorting coal. Then you had the loading boom, gently lowering coal into the rail cars. Inside track for loading slack, fine coal. Middle track for loading intermediate coal grades. Outside track for loading large lump coal. Anyway, there's about nine steps in it. So let's get a closer look of it. I know over there you have some, uh, I believe that was actually from the conveyors themselves. In that pile. We'll check that out here in a minute. And when I, uh, when I first saw this in a Only in Your State article, I wondered could you walk from the tipple from one side to the other and well now officially my question has been answered because well obviously that that is very unsafe and i would not recommend that so now let's go into the bottom where all of this worked at one point looks like you can hike to it in fact it looks like you can walk to some of the very important parts. In fact, in fact, look at that. Look at all those uh, different pipes. And it looks like maybe at one time you could get inside the tipple, but I don't think that's really the case anymore, I imagine. Probably due to safety reasons. I mean, the National Park, they don't want somebody dying every other day. Or a lawsuit on their hands. Uncle Sam does not like that. Although, I mean, if it happens to you, well, I, I guess in the words of our wonderful government, it, it's on it's all on your hands, buddy. And this is cool. Look where the the tracks started and where they ended. Now it's been a while since since this track was used. I I think this track was torn out sometime in the 80s. And now I can kind of see why maybe the stairs were pulled out on the bottom just to keep people from walking up to the top. Now I have seen some photos of people like going up to the top and taking pictures of it. That I do not recommend just because 
you could seriously get hurt and you do not want that it's kind of cool to see check out those stairs right there I mean, that's obvious that's obvious that that has seen better days as I say oh no that's not the stairs that's where the slag and all the coal would come out my apologies so yeah this is where the coal would come out it would come out from this one right here this conveyor belt and it would come out from this conveyor belt that is so interesting I I'm, I'm sorry you guys I just now noticed that my apologies and right across from the tipple I think these are some old mining cars or maybe something that or bins that would uh, be filled with coal I think anyway now that's awesome look at those old school railroad tracks that probably got pulled up forever ago and look how look how the metal has rusted them together and look here's even some good old smokeless west virginia coal now that was one of the special things about coal in the new river gorge area the coal was smokeless it was very fine coal it burned really well and overall it was just an awesome product to use at the time and i'm thinking this probably was a either an innkeeper or a conductor station at one point or maybe a miner station i mean why i say that is because here is a fireplace that's hidden right in here i imagine just think all the guys at the time they'd be sitting in this building or maybe something similar trying to stay warm during the cold winter months i will say we're like on the verge of spring and still this west virginia cold is very cold and now that we have seen the tipple let's look at some of the stuff that the national park pulled out a while back i mean i can see why they would probably pull out all this uh this iron and stuff or maybe it wasn't even so much the uh the national park service for safety reasons maybe maybe it was the company that came before because there were three different people that owned this land the Nuttall family was the last well the first and the last and they wound up shutting it down just because they weren't making any money mainly because i forgot to mention along with the coal bust or i say it's a coal bust um just because you know all these other machines were being switched over to the diesel well the other reason as you can see it, this land is very very hilly very steep it's very hard to get coal out of this particular part of the united states it's it's just uh what do you call it unreasonable there we go now i've seen this online and i don't really know what it is because all the other vloggers i've seen have never really come up close to it but now that i know what it is this is the giant conveyor belt that was pulled out okay well that makes sense now just look how big that big rusted uh that rip that big rusted bin is just look i mean you can tell that that has seen some better days it's all in a pile here oh dude look at that conveyor belt look at how all that worked look even like the steel there is still some shine to that dude yes now that is some major showmanship of what life was like all those years ago so after seeing this let's go check out these coke ovens i'm wondering if they're uh well that they probably are beehive ovens because that's the most common or at least in the southern region but uh we're about to find out my my uh my curiosity my my uh i don't know where i'm going with this just roll with me 
So here is a historical photo of what, uh, what these coke ovens looked like at the time. And if you all are curious to see the difference between coal and coke, well here it is. Coal or coal is, uh, is coal like what comes straight out of the mountain. Um, coke, coke is a, um, is coal with all the impurities burned out of it and it burns at a way hotter temperature. That's kind of why they, uh, they used it. Um, but anyway, this tells a little bit more about the Coke ovens. One of the first things John Nuttall did when he opened the Nuttallberg mine in 1873 is, was he built 80 Coke ovens. Workers produced Coke here for nearly 50 years, but changing markets and new technology made Coke ovens obsolete. Historians believe Nuttallberg's uh, uh, er, ovens have been idle since 1920. So they haven't been used in about 104 years. Now just think back of the sim back to the similar time or not the similar times. Now think back to the days of times gone by. Before 1920, before these coke ovens stopped seeing use. The coal would be put here. It would be burned. It would be turned into coke. Obviously these these coke ovens are very beaten and broken, uh, but then again, I mean, they've been here in the mountains for a while now. In fact, it's like you can't see the inside of one right there. But coal would be taken, it would be concentrated, turned into coke, and then it would be brought down here to the railroad tracks. And if you look at it, you can see like all the different types of uh, switches, like different types of switchboards that ran throughout this part of the mining operation and actually here is one that we can get a better look at I mean I'd probably say as of right now that one looks like it is the the best preserve that I've seen but I know that's that is bound to change but as I was saying all these railroad tracks this is where the coal would be concentrated and this is where it would leave. And as the historical marker was saying, from here to the other end, there are about 80 of them. Now a lot of them have collapsed. I'm guessing I was right on that one that I saw a minute ago, or I should say maybe a second ago. So that one looks like it's, it's fallen on hard times. And going on to the very end it looks like yeah all of this is is very much forgotten but i do like that you can still see the railroad tracks that is cool well actually no i take that back these coke ovens are so well preserved they have bars on them or at least i imagine the National Park Service doesn't want people to get hurt, but why I say that is you also have the wood holding them up. So yes, these are probably the best well-maintained of all the coke ovens. And I was right, um, these are beehive ovens. Now the reason why they have that dome shape to them is because that's how the heat stays so concentrated. In fact, this is what I'm talking about. Look how all this brick is stacked up one to one another. And the heat would be uh, going up that hole right there. But just look at the, uh, like I said, every time I see these, I think about the awesome manpower, or the awesome uh, handiwork that went into that. Now that's saying something, that one is sealed up. I guess they really don't want people inside there. But now we're walking up to this building and this building right here, this is the foundation of the company store. The foundation of the company store. And now um, in a former travel of mine, this was probably sometime maybe two years ago. Um, I was in Dunlap at the Dunlap Coke ovens. And now they, their they're, uh, they're Coke oven museum which is built in an exact replica of their company store. That one still exists, or well, not still exists, but 
it was constructed um reconstructed this one this one is just a foundation you kind of see where the the windows were at one point i mean this must have been quite a building imagine like men getting their tokens getting their pay that way and this is where they would get all their stubs they're they're in their families then they would make their way out and then well you know what they would they would go back to work and just beyond the company store there is a small community or what was a small community that goes that way and it was called the community of seldom seen now i don't think we're gonna go back there today mostly because the only thing that really exists are these piers these piers and sometimes these buildings or these things right here um and by the way the, just to give you all an idea of what is left over from nettleburg obviously we saw that saw that saw the taylor house you know which was the uh, the boarding house and uh on our way and i'll probably get this as we're heading on out to the uh to the uh, the actual mine at the top of the ridge this community actually had african americans as well you had a black church and you had a black school and uh those foundations are still out there as well but um anyway let's let's go on and let's try to see if we can't find the white church and the white school now that was one of the the uh drawbacks to, to working in a uh, in a town beside the river is like as the town grew and population came and went well they, they really couldn't find anywhere any flat land except for maybe what they could find along the riverbank so that uh that is what seldom seen was that's probably what led or another thing that led to nettleberg's downfall by the way check out this old school um this old school foundation that's right next to the uh the railway now in order to get to the foundations of the old school and the old church and a couple of the other foundations 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 we have to go this trail right here now technically there is a trail that goes to the very top of the mine but it's it's kind of steep and you know what it's it's just better to uh to just drive up to it Let's see no this is on the town loop trail you know looking from behind it this coal tipple is huge but another thing i want to note is like throughout here at uh at nuttleburg or what was nuttleburg there is a lot of water running out the mountainside but it could be too that uh it rained here a couple of days ago so probably water is still seeping out of the mountains and still making its way down to the river like this right here Does, doesn't that babbling brook sounds so peaceful so peaceful as it makes its way down to the the new river yeah we're not all that far away the white school is uh or the white church is uh, just up there and the the white school is uh is down there so we're we're coming pretty close up on it and here it is i was right this is what remains of the white church here is what it used to look like way back in the day but uh why they called it the white church was not because the building was white because but it was because the congregation members were white here in most coal towns blacks and whites attended separate tur or churches religion in the cold fields was much like religion anywhere else some people were religious some weren't because miners and their families came from a multitude of nationalities and religious backgrounds churches of many denominations were found in new river gorge religion in this region in the late 1800s and early 1900s was as diverse if not more so than it is today now i think probably what happened later on 
after after the town went down I'm probably thinking that probably either the church fell in or well it caught fire and you know what it was a pretty small steeple as if you can well, as you can see by the foundation not like some of these giant churches of today just think a pastor would be giving his sermon in what is now this small foundation think about the word of god that was being spoke here that must have been incredible to hear an appalachian pastor at one time it really gets you thinking about how things were all the way back then just think nowadays it's like you know you talk about anything religion related or faith-based or anything like that it always seemed to uh, cause a stir well i mean depends on i mean i mean like if you're a person of faith you know i think it's a bit easier to have conversation with people of different faiths because it's just the uh, the religious doctrine of what keeps your you know your faith or your religion going doesn't apply it's what you believe and it is what is in your heart and in your spirit but not to get too religious or uh philosophical or what have you as we follow the river well not river it's just kind of like a small well not even really a creek maybe it's a creek as we follow the small creek it'll take us down to the uh the white school house and i think the white school house i think that actually existed up until the 50s when it burned down so i think that was one of the original buildings just look what they have here at this rock here's some pottery and glass and shards from a town that once really existed or a time or a town which had people living in it nowadays you really just have deer like um i know a minute ago I actually saw a small uh, a small harem of doe running up the mountainside. Look at that. Yeah. That is a gin bottle. Some Crown Royal. I'm guessing that's probably from uh, probably from before Prohibition. And not far from the church was the school. And it looks like the foundation to the school was was definitely a bit more a bit more well well built in foundation one of nettleberg's two school buildings stood on this foundation if you were a child in nettleberg and your skin was white you attended school here a separate school for african americans stood about half a mile to the east elementary education was an integral part of an established coal town with coal companies constructing school buildings how long a child attended school depended on a family's attitude about school and their economic needs. Boys sometimes began to work in the mines as early as age 12. And uh, here is a picture of what it looked like way back when. Like I said, it uh, the house was way it was was way newer for its time back then. So I think think about it. A child would come to this school and this is where they would get their education and sometimes well families really didn't even believe in education and well sometimes around age 12 you would work and work and work 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 and by the way there's the stairs it was so long ago Little kids and the teachers, they would walk up, walk up this exact set of stairs. Only now, it's crumbling, falling apart. You can still see some of the pylons that were left over in the foundation. Now it's, it's just a bunch of rocks in a forest. And hiding here in the bushes, is what I believe to be an outhouse. Well, maybe not an outhouse. Maybe this was a storage building at one point. 
kind of looks like it'd be a storage building because the center blocks they look modern or about as modern as you can get and just on the inside uh, it uh now well, there's a bunch of trees so yeah this may have just been a storage shed i don't know what it is but i find it interesting that i am the only one out here in nettleburg today because my car's right there but if i'm the only person here right now does that mean i am the mayor probably not but uh it's 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 just a thought and here's a sidewall that goes down uh, the trail a bit of ways and from what i understand there was another house that was right next to the taylor house which was the uh the boarding house at one point and it should talk a little bit more or at least i think so anyway because you have the large home right there and we are actually right here um so anyway i think we're making our way back down and i believe we are um we're gonna see the remains of the black school and the black church now that is cool that is some of the remains of the plumbing obviously it, it doesn't work anymore but i still think it's really cool that it's just sticking up out of the ground and before we check out the remains of the black church or the black church in the uh the black school let's uh let's check this out this is the foundation of a small house as it says on the map and i think this historical marker could probably tell us a little bit more of what it actually was let's check out how like the road i think this is actually where the road used to run and go beside all the buildings at least i'm guessing anyway by the way there is a a drink bottle right up there in fact this historical marker does talk about it home sweet home the small building that once stood on this foundation was probably a mine workers house many mine workers and their families would have called this home over 85 or over the 85 year life of, of uh, nuttleburg try to picture yourself living and raising a family here a century ago uh, no 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 thanks the mine company built houses which they leased to workers usually deducted from rent or from pay a typical house was one story with a kitchen dining room and two bedrooms some were two-story but not all employees lived in the company houses here at the gorge bottom some workers by saving for years owned their own homes at the top of the gorge it seemed to be the ambition of all bottom men to own their own home on top and many did have the willpower to save their money and own their own home in about 10 years and that was john nuttle the second grandson of uh of john nuttle in fact let's get a closer look at it it's kind of cool to see how all these foundations were built way back when or how all these homes were built and how they stood the test of time for years and well only to uh fall apart i wonder if coal miners ever thought like what life would be like like would this town did they think like this town would exist forever or would it boom and then bust like a, a bad project gone awry anyway here's that drink bottle looks like that's an actually actually in some pretty decent shape mason jar probably a little more modern i really don't know what that is and huh i'm not sure i don't think that's bauxite maybe it's a fossil a long time ago these mountains had a different type of sound a different type of song men would be working in the coal mines they'd be yelling they'd be shouting women would be in the gorge taking care of the children the children would be in school life was very much different back then and so now we are going to check out the african-american church and the african-american school i don't know if, 
I don't know, maybe it's just modern times. I feel a little bit weird saying it like that. But uh, anyway, then we're heading up to the, uh, the actual mine itself. A segregated coal town. Carter G. Woodson, as a young man around the age when he would have taught school at Winona, a short distance from Nettleburg. I believe Winona is a uh, small suburb of, uh, of this once great coal town. Think about it. He was the African-American teacher of the black school in Nettleburg. And here it is. What remains of the, the old African-American school in uh, Nettleburg. You know what, I wonder if uh, East Tennessee PBS has done a, uh, a story with uh, Black and Appalachia. So, I mean, that's kind of interesting to hear how like people worked together back then. Think about it. This is the only thing that's left over from, from the days of, of the uh, coal mining industry. Oh my goodness, and check this out. That, ow, that is a chestnut husk. Now, I'm not sure if it is the hybrid version of the, the American chestnut or if it is just uh, an, actual, uh, an actual tree because the thing is, a blight killed this tree pretty much to the verge of extinction. Like, they only grow to like a certain height, then the blight kills them. But in recent years, what they did, they, uh, they took it and they bred the tree with a Chinese chestnut, which is practically identical. And uh, anyway, that was from the days of my, uh, my, forge, my forestry days. But yeah, think about it. This is from the days of a, of a segregated coal town. If only these, uh, these, this foundation could talk. And now right across from the, uh, the black school, near the African American school, this right here, I believe is the remains of the church. Obviously it's about the same height as uh, the white church, maybe a little bit bigger actually. And as for what I can tell, that foundation looks a bit more safer than, uh, it just overall looks a bit more safer than the, uh, the church up the road. But anyway, now that we have seen a majority of Nettleburg, let's head up to the heart where all the jobs came from, all of the tokens and money came from. Let's go to the mine. I think the sun came out a little bit. But, as we're walking, there is a 0.7 mile trail that goes down to the mine. Now, we could have gone the other way, but I'm doing something really awesome over at the New River Gorge Bridge in a later vlog. So, I figure this is probably the quickest route. Plus, I mean, 0.7 miles, that's... I mean, that's basically a mile round trip. Now, as I'm walking down to the coal mine, I just like how they, they have a rescue board here. And they also have a sign talking about climber information, about how, um, how it's, uh, it's private, <laughs> it's private land. T talk about a uh, very interesting national park. And it's so peaceful out here too. Uh, that it's kind of warmed up a little bit. They say that the high for today is going to be around 63. So I'd say that's pretty good, especially for a day in the mountains. It's interesting to see how things just randomly pop up the way they do. Kind of like the, uh, the head house in the mine, which I just now found it. Actually, 0.7 miles isn't all that bad, although it is going down. It's all going down here. It's all downhill, but going uphill. Yeah, that's that's I'm not looking forward to that. But here it is. 
there is one of the engines I, I guess it'd be engines or turbines that would uh, control the mine there's the head house itself just as much intact as uh as the triple is and right down there you've got some mining cars which we're we're fixing to head down there just imagine this is where all the guts were well maybe not the guts maybe uh, the best word to put it would be the heart of the mine the mine that kept people employed well for the most part i mean they practically they pa they practically gave their souls away to the, the mining the coal mining companies uh, but anyway this is this is ground zero this is why they were here for the most part making money well not really money making tokens there we go so they could buy it at the company store now i can't tell if that's a mining car or another piece of uh of the uh, the piece that or the conveyor that used to go up and down the mountainside but no no i mean i, I wouldn't think it to be a, a coal mining car looks like there's some kind of bins that are just hanging over the edge of the mountainside right next to where the head house is and right next to the head house we have this building and i think this is the uh i think this is the electric substation um yeah electric substation we are right here and that's where all the electricity came from and it looks like the hoist house is somewhere over there but uh anyway this mine operated for 85 years and it shut down it's silent the only thing you can hear is the new river i wonder if there's anything left in the old electric substation probably not i mean i mean it's obvious that that ceiling is is falling through here and there got some of the rocks falling into the glass windows Got some of the old pipings and look at the door that's that is cool just how that's laying there it looks like you can go in through the window but I don't, I don't think that we're going to do that i think we're just going to enjoy the beauty of what was this powerhouse this station that seemingly is no more yeah they really don't want anyone in there so we are going to respect their wishes but we're gonna take a look at the head house and over here they've got some more conveyor belt pieces again i don't know if it was the national park service that took that out or in 2005 when this when this area was becoming a national park by the way it, they are mining cars see you can you can see the wheels obviously it is all overgrown over infested or over over infested with with kudzu and uh what is it oleaca ligstrom uh privet chinese privet that's what it's called and here tucked away in the mountainside because the nuttleberg mine even to this day Look, it still has a lot of water running through it. Through the edge and whatnot. But it looks like they did fill in the cave at some point. Which, I mean, I can understand that because you wouldn't want anyone to get hurt. But the breeze, this breeze feels really, feels really good, to be honest. And here's another mining car. Now this one, obviously you can tell it was a mining car at one point. You can kind of see that all this used to go in and out of the mountains. Imagine, it feels like a ride at Dollywood, although it is not a ride at Dollywood. It's just leftovers from a bygone era. Like 
where all these big giant cars would come they would come through here through the head house and they would be poured into that conveyor system and down into down into the triple and if you look at the bottom you can see all the gears that got this place running and by the way check this out here's the old power box this is what got the entire place going and like the head house it's it's just wasting away here on the mountainside now real quick let's see what's down here there's some more of the conveyor stuff look at all the coal that is still laying here to this day that's incredible looks like this is that room that we saw back there yeah that was what kept this engine going this beast going amazing and well goes all the way to the bottom anyway you guys this was super awesome to explore Nuttleburg this ghost town is pretty close to Thurmond in my book like everything is still laid out as if it were left behind only yesterday now some of the buildings the foundations are still there but anyway don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon always means a lot goes to show that y'all care now you want to see more awesome videos so without further ado you guys this vlog is over.